From being the victim of bullying and false accusations, to having a failed idol career, to suffering from multiple turbulent relationships, in my last video, we covered the tragic life and career of Tiara member Yi Adder. But while some in her position are able to rise above the adversities to become a stronger person, Adam instead used her misfortunes as a weapon, taking advantage of people's sympathy to allegedly scam, lie, and threaten her own fans and loved ones, ultimately turning herself from the victim to the biggest villain in her story. Greetings, professors! Today, we will finally be uncovering the full scale of Yi Adam's shocking web of deceit. And trust me, it's gonna get wild. By the way guys, this is actually the second video in a two-part series. And in the first part, that was where we covered all of the tragic circumstances that led Adam to this point. So if you haven't seen it yet, then be sure to check out that video before coming back to this one. And I'll be adding the link to it in the description. But okay, before we jump into it, I wanted to take a moment to thank Fume for sponsoring this channel. Kicking a bad habit can be hard, so why not just start by replacing it with a better one? Well, that's where Fume comes in. Fume is an award-winning flavored air device. To be clear, it's not a vape or an e-cigarette, meaning that it doesn't need to be charged and it also doesn't contain any nicotine, so it's not addictive. So how it works is you've got these scented sticks which are called cores and as you can see they have a lot of different flavors to choose from. So currently I'm using the orange vanilla one and basically you just put the core into your device like this. So this is the core and literally it just naturally adds fragrance to the air that's coming through this device. So it doesn't produce any smoke or vapor. See? <laughs> Honestly, as someone who used to have to smell quite a lot of secondhand smoke, this has been such a lifesaver for me. I've been recommending it to a few of my relatives who tend to indulge in their habits at home, if you know what I mean, and this just allows them to satisfy their cravings without smoking the whole house up. Not to mention, it's also so much healthier for both them and everyone else in the family. Oh, and also, it's just so fun to fidget with, like look at how it snaps and clicks. <laughs> So satisfying. <laughs> so if you've got friends or relatives or if even you yourself are looking to change your bad habit this summer, then be sure to check out Fume. They've served over 300,000 customers and you can be their next success story. So for a limited time, use my code PLUPY to get a free Fume base when you order the Journey Pack. It's an all new magnetic stand for your Fume device. Head to tryfume.com, that's T-R-Y-F-U-M dot com and use code PLUPY or you can scan the QR code on screen to get your free Fume base when you order your Journey Pack today. So okay, where we last left off, there were more and more controversies and suspicions starting to surround Adam and her boyfriend Saw Dong Hoon. So things were definitely smelling fishy to say the least. But if you're one of those fans who was still holding out hope that perhaps it was all just a misunderstanding, then <laughs> prepare to get your hopes dashed. Because on the 1st of April, Dispatch released a bombshell article that not only proved Netizen's suspicions, but actually far surpassed everyone's worst expectations. This Dispatch article revealed the despicable and I mean truly despicable methods that this couple allegedly used to manipulate and extort their friends and fans. And they had screenshots, testimonies, and transcripts from over 7 victims which they nicknamed A to G. This was later also further backed up by other sources including an NBC special which revealed even more victims and their stories. So I decided to just talk about everything all at once. And guys, you're gonna want to prepare yourselves for this because trust me, it's gonna get your blood boiling. Okay, so based on what we know so far, it appears that the couple's fraudulent activities began in December of 2023, which if you recall, was exactly when Adam announced her divorce from her supposedly abusive husband Kim Yong-gul. Obviously, Adam's friends and family were very worried for her, especially after hearing about the domestic abuse. So they were more than willing to help her through these divorce proceedings. And this made it the perfect opportunity for Adam and So to start asking for money. The first victim Adam would contact would be her friend, Victim A. 
In December, Adam left voice notes to A to request 2 to 3 million won for her divorce lawsuit, followed by another request in February for 600,000 won. Now initially, A agreed to lend Adam the 600,000 won, but said that she needed a few days to gather the funds because honestly, she herself wasn't balling in cash either. I think we can all agree that A was going above and beyond as a friend, like literally trying to gather funds just to lend Adam money, so she was clearly trying her absolute best. Yet, Adam couldn't even wait for 24 hours before desperately chasing A for the money. In fact, in just the span of 10 minutes, Adam spammed A with the following messages. I'm sick right now and I need the money. Can you send the money today? There was a car accident and I need to go to hospital. Please check your messages. I'm really in a hurry. Please contact me right away. I had a serious accident. Bear in mind, the original reason for borrowing the money was supposedly for the divorce lawsuit. Yet, Adam was suddenly saying that she needed the money because of an illness and a car accident. Things just weren't adding up. And A was starting to get suspicious. So understandably, she stopped responding. In the end, it seemed like Adam realized that A wasn't going to send the money after all. So she manipulatively said, I'm disappointed in you. Take care from now on. A similar situation also happened with victim B, who was a friend that Adam had met at her postnatal care center. Once again, Adam asked to borrow 2 million won from B for her divorce lawsuit, to which B actually agreed and sent the money. However, surprise surprise, Adam never ended up fully repaying the loan. As if that wasn't bad enough, Adam even took out additional loans from loan sharks and put B as a guarantor. And B didn't even find out until loan sharks literally were knocking on her door to chase her for the money that Adam owed. In a statement to dispatch, B said, Out of the 2 million won, I only received 1 million won back. But what makes me even angrier than the money is the fact that she took advantage of someone who really cared about her. The same divorce lawsuit excuse would be used to scam numerous other victims. <laughs> And this would continue until March of 2024, when the couple came up with an even more compelling reason to beg for money. As it turns out, Adam had fallen pregnant with Sir's child, and who could resist saying no to a vulnerable pregnant lady? This time, the pair would claim that Adam was suffering from various pregnancy complications and needed money to cover her numerous medical expenses. Strangely though, these supposed illnesses were very inconsistent. Sometimes they were thyroid problems, sometimes she had blood in her uterus, sometimes she had numerous cysts, sometimes she was miscarrying, whatever seemed most persuasive, I guess. This was exactly what happened to victims D, E, and F from the Dispatch article, Jung and An from the NBC special, as well as many others, all of whom were friends of Adam's. In mid-March, the couple messaged D, E, and F with the exact same photo of Adam in a hospital gown. Yet they told D that Adam was suffering from blood in the uterus, while telling E and F that she was suffering from a miscarriage. Which like, dude, if you guys are gonna lie, at least keep your stories consistent. Anyways, thankfully only E lent the couple money, while D and F refused. Meanwhile, Jung and An were also approached by Adam, who claimed that she was once again suffering from pain and bleeding. <laughs> <clears throat> At first, both friends happily lent money to Adam. But things began to get suspicious when Adam started to hound them at all hours of the day to ask for even more money. Eventually, Jung discovered that Adam had actually been lying about being in hospital the entire time. Mm. 
너 그러면 영상 통화해봐라. 네 진짜 병원인 거 인증해봐라. 전화를 했는데 그 세탁기 끝나면은 뜬뜬뜬뜬르르르 그 소리 나는 거 있잖아. And Anne had contacted some other mutual acquaintances and discovered that everyone had been experiencing the same issues with Adam. Adam이랑 친했던 친구들한테 전화를 해요. 캐치오 뭐다 여기저기 돈 빌리고 다니고. Unsurprisingly, it wasn't long before the news got out to most of Adam's friend group, causing many of her friends to turn against her. And in fact, some of them even began to leave comments on Adam's social media page, warning others not to lend her money. Now, of course, these messages were quickly deleted by Adam herself. Who then proceeded to post defamatory stories about these now ex-friends on her social media, presumably so that her fan base could attack and bully them into silence. Obviously, this major falling out with the friends made it impossible for Adam to borrow any more money from them in the future, meaning that the couple needed to find new victims. And so, this was when they began targeting the people who looked up to Adam the most: her fans. Adam and Seo Dong Hoon would reportedly prowl Tiara's official fan cafe to identify her biggest fans, and then message them on Instagram DMs with numerous sob stories, ranging from domestic violence and child abuse claims to Adam's supposed health issues to even threatening suicide, all in an attempt to suck their fans dry of as much money as possible. Victim G, for instance, was the fan who had left the comment about the photo with the three fingers. I was worried that you might have been hacked, so I asked you to take a real-time proof shot showing your face and three fingers, and you sent it to me right away. This patch managed to obtain the chat logs between Adam and G, and as you can see, the moment G asked for the verification photo, Adam immediately sent it, followed by an urgent message just moments later saying. So you're helping, right? It's like she can't even wait one second for people to send her the money. It's crazy. But despite how quickly Adam initially responded to G when borrowing the funds, the moment it came time to actually return the money, Adam suddenly ghosted G. The next thing G knew, Adam claimed that she had been hacked, which was obviously very puzzling. So G tried to contact Adam to find out what was going on, but that was when she discovered that she had actually been blocked. Another unfortunate fan who fell victim to the alleged fraud was Victim H. Victim H was apparently a longtime fan of Tiara's and had even attended Adam's wedding. Naturally, such a dedicated fan was more than willing to help Adam during her time of need, and did not hesitate to lend the couple over 4.2 million won in total to cover her medical expenses. <laughs> 자궁에 혹이 있고 갑작스 수술을 들어가야 된다. 어? 얘 수술이가 없어 수술을 못 한다. 저는 거의 하루 반을 돼서 420인가 430분 했어. However, this money was once again never returned. But perhaps the most tragic example is Victim C, who was yet another dedicated member of Tiara's fan club. C was first approached by Adam, who claimed that she needed to borrow money to cover her children's emergency room fees. C told Dispatch, "When I heard that her child was sick, I received a DM saying that she didn't have enough money to pay for the emergency room. Coincidentally, this was also when Adam had posted about the child." It just seems so heartbreaking. And so, being the good fan that he was, C immediately lent as much money as he could, and he thought that he was doing a good thing, you know, helping poor Adam and the kids out. But sadly, all this did was make him a prime target for their exploitation. From this point on, the couple would continuously ask C for more and more money, essentially using him as their personal ATM. At one point, Adam claimed that she needed money to cover her upcoming surgeries. While on another occasion, Saw claimed that Adam's kids needed to get CT and MRI scans. I mean, the tragedies just never seem to end. The couple would also repeatedly call C while crying and use life and death situations to guilt trip C into sending them even more money. Adam이랑 그 전에 준다는 마음으로 좀 도와주면 좋을 것 같아. 지금에 정확하게 필요한 금액을 91만 2천 원. 네, 수술 이제 들어가 이제 한대 50만 원만 딱 부탁할게. 아래미는 다시 수술해야 되고 400만 원딱 마지막 기거든. And when all else failed, Sado Hoon even resorted to threatening suicide. In a transcript of a phone call between Saw and C, Saw allegedly said, "Bro, I really want to die. Should I just jump from the 10th floor of the hotel lobby?" C, "Don't do that." Saw, 
Say, can I just have a little more help, please? See. How much more do you need? And Adam herself allegedly also did the same thing. At one point, telling C, quote, I don't want to die over this 2.2 million won. It's urgently needed, so please help me somehow. As a result of these repeated suicide threats, C felt as if he had no choice but to repeatedly send money, to the point where he even took out loans with his bank just to continue funding the couple. And in the end, it was reported that C had lost a total of 30 million won. But shockingly, this wouldn't even be the only time that the couple used suicide to their advantage. Because remember how Adam allegedly attempted suicide on the 26th of March? Well, unbelievably, it turns out that this too was used as yet another ploy to ask for even more money. I mean, just when you thought they couldn't stoop any lower. According to numerous friends and acquaintances, as soon as Adam regained consciousness on the 28th, they immediately began texting everyone with photos of Adam supposedly recovering in bed. But thankfully, nobody fell for it this time. These are just a few of the many, many victims that this couple scammed. I could honestly go on and on, but as you may have realized, I'm starting to sound like a bit of a broken record because of how similar all of these stories sound. And as a matter of fact, the victims have since discovered that some of the messages they received were actually completely identical, leading to suspicions that Adam and So may have been copying and pasting the same messages to as many contacts as possible. All in all, it is estimated that the couple has incurred upwards of 42 million won in unpaid debts. Which all leads us to one important question. Where did all this money go? Well, currently, this remains under investigation. Although the most credible theory right now is that the money might have been used to fund So Dong Hoon's gambling habits. You see, looking at the 42 million won in question, it appears that a vast majority of the money was actually transferred to So Dong Hoon's bank accounts as opposed to Adam's. Additionally, alleged text messages have surfaced where the couple said that they were quote, betting on Toto, which happens to be the official sports lottery system in Korea. In fact, So Dong Hoon's ex-partners all testified that he has had a long history of gambling addiction. And as it turns out, this was actually the root cause of his criminal charges. <laughs> One of his ex-girlfriends, Song, revealed that So Dong Hoon had begun borrowing large amounts of money to gamble just one week into their relationship. Apparently, the situation got so bad that he even began stealing Song's phone at night so that he could impersonate her and borrow money from her friends and family. <laughs> The same thing also happened to another one of So Dong Hoon's exes, surnamed Yi, who claimed that So Dong Hoon had stolen around 9 million won by impersonating her. Additionally, So had also taken photos of Yi without her consent, which he had planned to use as blackmail, presumably so that he could extort even more money from her and her loved ones. In the end, Song, Yi, and another unknown victim filed criminal complaints against So Dong Hoon, which was ultimately what led to his two and a half year stint in prison. Fast forward to September of 2023, So Dong Hoon had finished serving his prison sentence and he was finally released. And then it wasn't even a month later, in early October, that he and Adam began dating. Currently, it is still unclear how they met, although Saw claims that Adam was the one who messaged him first on social media. Now, if this is the case, it is possible that Adam might have found Saw's social media page, because at the time, he was portraying himself as a screenwriter for Latte, and he had even posted auditions to his Instagram page. So this is purely my guess, but if you recall, Adam was trying to get into acting. So perhaps she found him this way? We will never know. What we do know for sure is that these auditions, saw social media page, his whole screenwriter job, it was all fake.
whether it's pretending to be a karaoke owner, a salon owner, a composer, or whatever else, Saw has had a long track record of lying about his identity. And this screenwriter persona was no different. So all this begs the question, you know, was Adam just another unknowing victim like Saw's other exes? Was she also completely lied to? Perhaps she too had her phone stolen at night? Well, that was exactly what Adam wanted everyone to believe. On the 19th of April, just days after all of this info came to light, Adam immediately turned on Saw, accusing him of being the mastermind behind the entire scheme. 저는 토토라는 걸단한 번도 해본 적도 없고요. 근데 그 입원한 기간에 저를 찾아왔었어요. 찾아내서. 그래서 병원에서 일어났던 그 갈치 사건들도 약 깨운 취해서 자고 있을 때 걔가 다 해낸 행동이고요. On her Instagram story, she even claimed to have the exact same experiences as So Dong Hoon's other ex-girlfriends, claiming that So had also, quote, arbitrarily used her phone to commit fraud while she was asleep. It seems like poor Adam was the victim once again. If you disregard the voice recording she sent, the photo she took, and the phone call she made, <laughs> she once also said this in her live stream. Which shows that she was well aware that friends, family, and fans were sending her money. All the evidence points to the fact that Adam was at the very least a knowing accomplice. Yet despite the overwhelming proof, Adam continued to lie, insisting that all of this was the work of Saw and other advanced hackers. I don't know how the hacker did it, but the picture of me holding up the three fingers? It's an edit using a photo that is saved on my phone. Yeah, nobody was buying it. Not even the fans. And by late April, a group of these fans had actually officially filed a police report against both Adam and Saw so Dong Hoop. Now, it is unknown what happened with Saw, so, but we know that Adam was officially charged with fraud just two weeks ago and is currently undergoing criminal investigation. Additionally, Adam's ex friends are also planning to file a lawsuit against the couple, so they have that to look forward to. But guys, the story doesn't even end here. Because remember those accusations that she made against the ex-husband Kim Young-gul? In her statement, Adam accused Kim Young-gul of gambling, domestic violence, and child abuse, claiming that he had defecated on the children's faces, hit her children, and verbally and physically assaulted her. Well, apparently, even this ended up being a lie. Police found no evidence of child abuse to the point where Kim Young-gul ended up being cleared before the charges could even officially be filed. Instead, in an ironic twist of events, it was actually Adam who ended up getting charged with the abuse. On the 14th of June 2024, Guangmyeong Police Station announced that they had found evidence of abuse, neglect, abduction, and coercion of a minor by Adam and her mom. So it was revealed that back when Adam had initially filed the police report against Kim for the child abuse, the authorities had immediately transferred the children to a shelter. However, Adam and her mother allegedly kidnapped these kids and then proceeded to lie on social media that they had been given custody. And it's likely they did this in an attempt to trick the public into thinking the police were on their side. So this was what led to the abduction charge. As for the coercion charge, well, remember that voice recording she had posted to YouTube? Yeah, it turns out that the children may have been tricked into falsely accusing their father. So Dong Hoon revealed that Adam had bribed her children with toys and hit them on the thighs whenever they refused to give the false statements. Now, obviously, So isn't the most reliable source, but in this case, it appears that even the forensic experts agree with him, as they too stated that they had found evidence the videos were staged. Currently, it is reported that the courts have filed a restraining order to prevent Adam from seeing her kids, and the child abuse charges have also been forwarded to prosecution. 
I will say that at this point, perhaps the only accusation against Kim Young-gul that hasn't been completely debunked yet are the spousal abuse claims. And not that there's any evidence to prove it either. But yeah, as of now, that remains a very he said, she said situation. And since Adam never officially filed a police report, it's unlikely that we will ever get a solid conclusion for this. So I guess as of now, that is probably the only leg Adam has to stand on, and it's a wobbly one at best. So all in all, with two criminal investigations and lawsuits pending against her, it appears that Adam may finally be getting her comeuppance. And look, I do agree that she had a very unfortunate career, and I also truly sympathize with any physical or mental health issues that she may be going through. I can't even imagine how hard that must be. But in my opinion, that still doesn't justify the things that she allegedly did. Issues like reproductive health, and abuse are already stigmatized enough as is. And so for Adam to weaponize such sensitive topics is just beyond words really. Like, I, I don't even know what to say about it. And the way that she took advantage of her kids, her friends, her fans, like, way to go betraying the people who cared about you the most. Oh, and as for that Sa Dong Hoon, well, he's trash, but that's just stating the obvious. Ultimately, I'm glad that at least this is finally coming to light now, and I sincerely hope that the victims will get the justice that they deserve. But yeah, those are my thoughts, and I'm interested to know what you guys think, so be sure to let me know in the comments. As always, my research document will be on my Patreon. It's a chunky research document this time. And if you enjoyed this video, then I'd really appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Lastly, I'd like to thank Fume for sponsoring this video, so be sure to check them out using the QR code here or the link in the description. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Thank you for watching and special thanks to my Patreon members for supporting my channel. If you'd like to watch reaction videos and other bonus content, then be sure to check that out on my Patreon.